This video is sponsored by Current. Oh, is it a treasure to return to Horizon's world. Zero Dawn marks the start of me really understanding what I'm doing and wanting these videos to be. And watching that video back before writing this one has been humbling and insightful. These last few months have been the hardest I've endured in a long time, and I'm sure you've seen it in the quality of the content. Coming back to this world really feels like my own personal Zero Dawn, as the game has reinvigorated me, not just with the drive to create better content, but to be better in my everyday. Games can be so transformative for anyone who experiences them, and it feels like Forbidden West grabbed me at just the right time. I love how we go from natural life to the smallest of those machines, the largest, and then see them all existing harmoniously. It's a beautiful reminder of what we fought so hard in the previous game to save, and also the evolution the world has gone through. I'm running out of time, Elizabeth. Forbidden West really leans in on the relationship Aloy has cultivated with Elizabeth which is so interesting as they never have actually met. And Aloy talking directly to her to vent about her struggles is the perfect place to start Aloy's arc. More on why as we go. All because of a terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. After the events of the first game, Aloy has learned so much, and maybe too much as what she's learned has become somewhat volatile to herself. She grew up an outcast, and throughout the first game, slowly integrated and leaned on others to help, but now has pushed them all away and become alone again. This isn't really games not knowing what to do with the story and resetting her arc. I find it so powerful that after Aloy learned the war's not won and that the stakes have gotten higher, she wanted to leave everyone behind by choice to get this job done and save everyone. She spent her whole life wanting acceptance and to belong, and now willingly chooses to be alone. It's... So powerful because it was her choice this time, rather than circumstance. And now any consequences of this action fall directly on her. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then... Extinction. It's the same plot as Zero Dawn, yeah. <laughs> Save the Earth from Extinction. And will be in the third game, obviously. But I don't mind it, because all our characters are in widely different places emotionally and mentally from the first time they had to deal with this threat. The plot is the same, but the story is very much different. And an important thing to remember is that those two are not interchangeable when discussing them. I've been searching for months for what I need. A backup of Gaia. Seriously, don't forget to back up your files. It might just save the world one day. And every night, I have the same dream. And when I arrive at the center, I see you, Elizabeth. Now that's really interesting that it's Elizabeth permeating her dreams. Her metaphorical and... I guess, literal mother, but also her as an almost perfect copy, so it's a little messy. But her mother, she never met instead of Rost, the man that actually raised her. There's still this hollowness she feels because Rost is gone and that hole is gaping. And also with the fact that she was created and believes only someone like Elizabeth can be the only one who could understand. But we see that in the dreams, she's always snatched away from Aloy, no matter what. For all Elizabeth has granted her and the comfort that came with that, she's gone and holding on to her is only bringing more pain to the hole in her heart that can only be filled by moving forward with the people around her. And it's beautifully symbolic that Elizabeth places the world around Aloy's neck, passing off the responsibility of safeguarding the world to her, but also placing all the pressure that comes with that, which is the main conflict for Aloy in Forbidden West. Who is she really? Her own person? Just another machine manufactured to save the world no matter what? This comes to a head when she meets Beta. And for a moment, I feel whole, but it never lasts. And that's a beautiful reminder you hear time and time again, but it's so true. Nothing's beautiful because it lasts. We have to live life by these moments and steal as many of them as we can before our time is up. When silence is about to leave at the end, seemingly dooming Earth, I felt some contentment with Aloy, as she seemed okay to live out her final days with those who love her. So a lot like Horizon, technology is permeating every aspect of our lives, and that's why I want to talk to you all about Current. It is the future of banking, as it all takes place right in your smartphone. You can manage every aspect of your finances from anywhere, and you may be wondering, Mr. Gainwins, I already have a bank, and it works fine. And sure, maybe it does, but Current is the future of banking with 4% APY on savings. That's up to 60 times the national average for saving accounts. That's just free money that you could be earning all by using Current. Current is all about making it easy to switch with a slick UI all in your pocket so you can smoothly make the switch into the future. They even organize your purchases for you by type. And Current is helping me give away $500 to you all, so go download my app and use my code GAMINGWINS and start making your money work for you. I'm always left alone. The framing is great. 
not making her the focal point, placing her underneath a treehouse, aka a home, having a lot of empty space around her. Hammer's home the line, but what I like most about it, I mentioned earlier, she wasn't left alone. She chose that, whether she could realize it or not. And to see Aloy so driven towards one goal but emotionally lost really resonated with me. If it isn't Aloy, the savior of Meridian, anointed of the Nora. You know I hate being called that stuff. Yeah, I'd hate it too. Aloy is never not humble, and it's one of my favorite qualities of hers. So, what are we doing? Or maybe it has something to do with the Blight. Both, actually. But, um... I should- Oh no. God, I love that. Varl coming up immediately ready to tackle whatever is ahead, saying we, and Aloy not ready to accept and carry on with I. And also, Varl's a gorgeous man. That beard? That hair? I'll give you another one later and show you how to back up your data. Data? Backups. And Varl, Vo, and Aaron constantly not understanding this new tech never got old for me. We take everything we have built around us today for granted so often, it's really humbling to see somebody become acquainted with it. Love this little moment of Arl stealing himself before moving forward. He just got bombarded with something so alien to him. He needs a moment. Forbidden West is astonishing. There's almost no discrepancy between cutscenes in the open world and fidelity, and it's amazing. This game is the first I've played that truly feels like it's scratching the surface of what this current generation is capable of. And the fact that this even runs on the base PS4 is a marvel in and of itself. And that's mostly because when Gorilla was creating this game, they started with the PS4 and then did their upgrades instead of vice versa. So when you got developers run by a studio that actually cares about their employees, you get games like this. Gorilla delayed Forbidden West to avoid making their devs crunch to meet the deadline. We need more of that in the industry. We all know the good adage. A delayed game is eventually good. A rushed one never is. You can't tell me this isn't the most beautiful water you've ever seen. I mean, Skyrim mods come close, but damn, look at the shimmers on the pond bed. Never seen one of those before. The rampancy of the terraforming process is the perfect excuse Gorilla needed to add new fun machines. Or just going west works too. There. Uh, pull caster. Hey, look at that. Aloy being real creative with the name of her new tool. Almost as creative as I was naming this channel. Two points to pull instead of one to train the player more with this new mechanic. To introduce you to Far Zenith. Zenith, by definition, means something at the height of its power. You could just hear the arrogance of these creators through their naming of their project. Red flags right from the very start. The Odyssey, it, it never made it to the other star. Something went wrong, and it blew up. <laughs> Varl's face here is what every player is thinking. That sounds like hooey. We all know the projections. Economic instability. New biocontagions. Rampant AIs. At least they knew what they were getting themselves into. How long before another catastrophe creates unacceptable risk for the world's elite? Now we're really starting to get into these guys. They are not as noble as the Zero Dawn Project. Creation born out of selfishness never works. We here at Far Zenith believe escape the inevitable. And so we reach for the stars. Are the themes heavy handed and the scripts very tell don't show? Yeah but I don't think it should take away from the storytelling as a whole. Forbidden West is a complete upgrade in Zero Dawn in every aspect, except maybe the story to some. And I'm gonna say that could be derived from the resources poured into every other aspect of the game because, like I said, everything else is better. But it's relevant storytelling. Escaping a planet instead of fixing the one we have? As Tony Stark put it best. Not a great plan. So everything they said back there about the next step for humanity, it was all a lie. These people only cared about saving their own skin. I understand the criticism of this kind of dialogue. Very force-fed to make sure the player gets it. And I don't love it either. But it informs us of Varl's beliefs, at the very least, and how used to all this Aloy is. I mean, after seeing Ted kill the Alphas, not much would surprise me either. I find it funny that these primitive weapons can take down these highly sophisticated machines. But only dealing actual damage to exposed weak points pretty much clears this up. It's the rivers and lakes choked with algae. You were born to fix all that? Yeah. And it's gotta be tough to balance relationships when even said relationships are fueling this fire that's already eating up her mind. Anzu. So this is fun. From what I could find, Anzu is a Sumerian Akkadian demon who stole the Tablet of Destinies. This tablet was basically a document that granted the god Enlil supreme authority as the ruler of the universe, which all lines up perfectly with the Zenith taking Gaia from Zero Dawn. The naming scheme relating back to human myth has always been my favorite of these games. 
gosh, the machine design across the board is just amazing. Always clear of its inspirations and then adding on the machine flair. It's a fun game to guess on what part each machine is to serve on rebuilding the earth. Every time Aloy does this, it's a flex. <laughs> I love Ashley Birch. She's so good as Aloy. Beta, Elizabeth, all three of them. There's nothing more entertaining than watching an actor play subtle different versions of their character. Oh, so good. The rattle here is just how a real rattlesnake's tail work. Having layers of plates shake and bounce the sound around. 6.9. Nice. A far as the conspiracy to steal a copy of Gaia and her subordinate functions? Naughty, naughty. You want me to handle this, Liz? Gotta love Tate. Of course a goober like him would make this fake version 6.9. John the Baptist accused religious leaders of being a brood of vipers to feel that they had the power of life and death in their hands, which makes us fighting snakes outside of here more poignant. And Tate relaying this sermon is just funny. So good luck repairing your data. And next time you start thinking you can outsmart a Tate. They did mention Tate being an amazing hacker just moments ago too. And it makes me happy that though this man is so intelligent, he's still a kid inside. I got it. Taking a page out of Aloy's book, I see. Wait here while I check it out. Let us know what you find. Sometimes you gotta take what you can get. Getting her to come back to Meridian was already a big win. I've got a bad feeling about this. Everyone when Disney bought Star Wars. I see you finally figured it out. Lance Reddick, my friends. His performance as Silence just makes me so happy. He's got that butter smooth voice that's always got a sharp bite. Plus, his machine cables for being a Bannock shaman makes me wish we had them as an option at tattoo shops, if you follow me. I want to thread some cool cables into my skin. I can't mention all the amazing lore behind everything, but the idea that the blue light that emits from the machines is their life essence, and in turn, the Bannocks sew the cables into his skin to keep the essence inside themselves is just cool, okay? Horizon's world building is remarkable. If you knew, why didn't you just tell me? I've been having problems of my own these past six months, Eloy. The difference is, I've made progress. God, I love him. Especially in this game where Aloy is worshipped and everyone she stands up to always backs down. But Silence? Mm, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her and wins most of the time. So once you're angered, my entirely necessary deception has faded. Yes, ma'am! Silence pragmatism is intact from the first game. My favorite among his traits. This most likely comes from his time being a Bannock Shaman. More in control of his emotions. What did you discover? Hades, the danger didn't end here. Okay, ignore the dialogue. Don't care about that. Listen to that score. Meridian's theme feels like a bright, warm, welcoming sun to all. Yours Demand's score is beautiful, and this won't be the only win for it. Great, just what I need. More killers. Dang, Aloy would be jumping to the conclusions about silence. Warranted the conclusions, but still. Can we show the champion the spear now? Please? <laughs> I can tell I'm getting softer about kids as I get older. A Taman is so freaking cute, and even Aloy knows it. Decorum usually calls for a ceremony of offering at the palace, but I thought you would prefer a less formal occasion. Avad knows a thing or two about his crush. I mean, yeah, right? He was crushing her in the last game. Or was he just looking for that rebound after Ursa's death? Smart little cutaway to not see how Aloy might awkwardly try to put this headband on one-handed. Aaron and the gang poke fun at this later, but look how cool Marad's shirt is. Not to mention the rest of his garb, not to mention all of the costume design throughout Horizon. It's also intricate, detailed, and with meaning attached to each tribe and how their clothing came to be, such as the aforementioned cables sewn into skin. They make fun of our modern clothing for being so tight-fitting, boring, and lifeless. I couldn't agree more. Let's bring back capes, skirts for men, and spending one hour just to get dressed. I feel you, Varl. Sometimes I stay up late falling asleep at my desk writing, but when you're having fun doing something, we can sleep when we're dead. I'm kidding. Get your eight hours of sleep. It's good for you. Where am I to find the words for these intro credits? We get an abridged, slightly changed version of In the Flood, rescored with Horizon music on top of these stunning visuals while being reminded of the amazing talent that made this game. This song is so obviously perfect as it was written for Aloy. Wondering if she's a raindrop in the flood, wrestling with her responsibility, curious if her mistakes will lead to more chaos, and the line, these words don't seem like mine no matter how hard I've tried, for her inability to let people in despite all her growth last game. It's a beautiful song performed gorgeously by Ariana Gillis. Sorry, 
Gotta also mention, the wave inside my soul carries all I know. To me, that's about Elizabeth's legacy and how Aloy feels that she must follow and live up to it. Elizabeth died alone and gave her life to save the Earth, and now Aloy is on track to repeat history. This vista reminds me the first time I looked out over the embrace in Zero Dawn. Grillet's got a way about bathing their vistas in sunlight that can only be matched by... Huh, would you look at that? Another first-party stony game goes to Tsushima. This savage... Besides scallywag. <laughs> scallywag is such a silly insult that I feel the need to start using it in everyday arguments to defuse the situation. Studious Wadi sent Aaron and another vanguard out at daybreak to clear the way. And so at daybreak... Hey! Shh. I've heard some complaints about Aloy's demeanor just being actually virtuisms. Don't really know where that comes from, but I've heard it. Never really understood that because I always get a kick out of Aloy stepping on fools and not putting up with BS. I mean, if I was tasked with saving the world, I'd be a bit abrasive too. Operators under strict orders. No passengers till the whistle blows, right? That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah, working together to shit on Papa's officials. Jorf, would you kindly escort Studious to Chain Scrape and wait for me there? You got it. Oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> Oh, I'm happy to see your bestie kicking ass. Now this, this is what I was forged for. That's such a hard line. And also really indicative of his drive to help Aloy. Forged and created to serve and protect. Anyone else love how Aaron's hair fills in the gap in his beard? Just me? Okay. Uh, this, uh, who needs ribs? <laughs> Barbecue restaurants? Aaron, what I did at the Spire, what we did. Haha, <laughs> growth. Aaron, I hate to interrupt the romance, but I'm pretty banged up here. <laughs> I love that even though Aaron do be crushing, he knows where Aloy stands and never makes it weird. And Grilla never forces a romance on these two. Just no space for it in this story, and it wouldn't fit for Aloy's character anyway, especially with where she is right now. Don't blow your blaze, I'm coming. I won this in Zero Dawn. Having the sun themes permeate even the way the cards are speak, so cool. Valley should be safe enough to travel. I'll go give Wadis the good news. Ashley Birch, yes please. You could just hear the snark and imagine her face saying this. Oh, you did? Now that you've recovered from your shock, time to blow the whistle. Oh there, not so fast. Would you look at that? Aloy's still learning from silence. So once you're angered, my entirely necessary deception has faded. The Sun Priest. Walked in practically kicking and screaming behind his escort. Really seems to like his scrolls. Luan gets it. Yea, for as the first shall be cut. Shut up. What's that? I know the usual. Aloy wants something. People Open try to stand it away. It's not gonna gates. work. <laughs> Aaron gets it. Take it from one who aspires to be a diplomat. Allies are essential. Something the world, or at least a country or two, could try and figure out. And yeah, they really do go hard on the allies and Aloy trying to do this all on their own shtick. <laughs> Damn, Catalo is just a badass. <laughs> you can see his new model being used here with the wrap already over his arm. You wouldn't notice it unless you're picking through it like I am. Gorilla being resourceful. It makes me sad that this has to become a win in the industry today, but Forbidden West was such a smooth release. Only the minorest of hiccups. I only had to reload a save twice, and it ran like a dream on the PS5. Can't speak for the four. And those occurrences just kind of come with the territory in an open world this size. And... It was only twice. I remember my first times with Skyrim. It was, oh, there were so many broken quests. There were a number of Karja and Asuram who went out there before the gates were shut for the embassy. Maybe you could check in on them, see if they're all right. Horizon, better than most games, has a great way of naturally leading the player into side content. There's that one over there near the Utara border, but why? It's, uh, it's hard to explain. It'll help me get the lay of the land. If you say so. Sounds like you explained it pretty easily. He thinks he's got it all figured out. I like that at the end, he really did. Granted, with a much higher cost than Aloy's plan, but they both have their merits. System threat detected. Oh, Hades' voice is so scary and sexy. Come to destroy me. Yes. Permanently this time. Huh. There seems to be a little hint of empathy she's got for Hades. Seeing him like this. Aloy's ripped. She's 100% an inspiration to keep me in the gym. I see you've dealt with Hades. Yeah. Now, this was a shock for me, and I'm sure many others. Zero Dawn framed the sequel as Silence using Hades to create machines for his own purposes, and we would be against him in Forbidden West. I'm pleasantly surprised they didn't take this easy route. Man, what's up with games nowadays with these power seat, I, I mean energy cells? 
I mean, it's just this in Halo Infinite, but it's weird it happened twice so close together. And also half the game taking place in steel ruins and blue lights. It's kind of weird. Pizza rolls, absinthe, a couple of hacky sacks. Tate's my kind of man. I love this world so damn much, but no one in it. I mean, have you ever even had a friend? I love all of this, but it is getting a little heavy handed and they are just repeating the same things over and over again. But we are seeing that it's not Aloy's fault the way she is. It's in her genes to be so cold. So products of our parents we are. Always admire you from afar, Liz. It's where my mama's grave. And she was religious. There's why he quoted scripture in the logic bomb. The exceptional walk, a path of solitude, Eloy. We like to think so. Build ourselves or others up onto a pedestal that we believe we must or can never reach. But even as Silence speaks this, they are currently needing each other to get things done. It's crazy how blind we can be when so much is weighing us down. I was hoping to find all the subfunctions, but one's enough to get started, right? Openness. What? That's a direct quote from when I was playing through it because this blew my mind. Yo, who brought Dr. X into this game? God, I've, I've been waiting so long to say that joke. Every time I saw him in the game, that's all I could think about was writing this one line. But that certain tremor, as life fades from the eyes. Ooh, no hollow quite gets it. I'm real tired of bad guys that just relish being bad, but I'll give Eric a pass since he's been invulnerable for a millennium. Taking life is the closest thing he can get to being reminded of its natural cycle. Why does Eric also dilly-dally and hold Aloy by the neck? Well, he mentioned snapping necks and watching the life drain, so. As verdant limbs wither, roots rot in snow, still the seed rises as certain as stone. Zoe? Wow, does Zoe or Erica Luttrell have such a calming voice? I could listen to her sing me to sleep every night. So I can't blame Varl for falling in love with her. Bed rest. I got it. Ayla gets it. Man, Horizon does what I think every game should aspire to. Create a world that the player would want to live in. I could only imagine living in this type of community, waking up every day to the beautiful sunrises and chorus singing. Let me amend that and say games of its type. I sure as hell don't want to live in Raccoon City. That dude's got some nipples on him. Save my people. In the wise words of Matt Mercer, you can certainly try. I would have much preferred the focus highlighting all climby bits instead of just rock faces and continually breaking my immersion with convenient yellow pipes all over the place. Let us explore and find the climbing ourselves, and if we need help, then we can have the option of the focus. They set up the t-ball, but we're a little too scared to take the swing. Though progress is progress, and these first party games are getting there. Like God of War. There was a in-universe reason for all the markings. Light. Cease. I think you'll disappear into her. It's so interesting that once the subfunctions are independent of Gaia, they gain some kind of sentience and help set up the idea that something like Nemesis could truly come to be. But it appears to have originated 81 trillion kilometers away. So that's like 89 quadrillion football fields for us Americans. After what happened in the cave below, I want to stay here a while. There is much I need to understand. For having everything she ever knew about her faith in a life completely racked? She's handling it really well. No, it is the Diviner's purpose to seek out the legacy, interpret the wisdom of our ancestors for the good of all, and to keep it safe, so that no one but the Diviners know how to use a focus. Sounds a little fishy to me. Ted Faro fan club setup. I've been through all of them. Look in the GH facility section. It must be nice for Aloy to converse with somebody that can understand this stuff on her level. That's not silence. It's okay. It looks like your focus is an early model. That's neat. Explains why it's so freaking big. But Alva dresses it up well. And now we're racing against time to find something to give them indigestion. I don't know. You ever try some whiskey? Does the trick for me. My sister. I left her when she was 14. Already you could see her bones. They will starve. Allison Jay's performance was already cutting some onions, but now thinking how this interaction is going to help form Aloy's relationship with Beta is tugging some heartstrings. This might be my favorite fight of the game, the Dreadwing. Just being an oversized bat is so cool. I love that almost every machine is always a bigger version of its real life counterpart. 
Elizabeth Sobek stands before you, an ancestor reborn. Again, I went, what? Alba knew all this time, which recontextualizes her reaction when she first sees Aloy. It's masked as the threat of death to us, why she shudders, but that wasn't the case. Any good reveal like this should always recontextualize previous events. You're in need of some training. Come along. Uh, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Check out Aloy's reaction to this. I see Varl gave you a focus. Well, it doesn't look as you know, fashionable on me, but... And if you think there's a lot of plot-driven dialogue in the main story, you'd be right. Any chance of character moments and bonding to be had with other characters are behind the optional interactions, which is a real shame, as many won't ever indulge to speak with them. But it's well worth the extra time spent, as the story doesn't take it. And Gorilla paid extra special attention to have our companions react and have comments on our actions out in the open world, like when we complete side quests or clearing out camps. It's, uh, it's Beta, right? I'm imagining that she didn't get to choose her name, so it really goes to show how messed up the Zenas are. She's Elizabeth, but they can't and won't grant her that confidence within herself out of fear and name her Beta. Bless her. Second. To drive how they want her to believe she is. Hey, boy. I suppose you want information about you and the Zeniths? Yeah. God, there is such good direction given to Ashley Birch to really differentiate these two characters. And she pulls it off in stride. Gorilla is on record stating that this was the one relationship that they spent the most time on. Because if they didn't get this right, the entire second half of the game and Aloy's arc just wouldn't work. Not their descendants. It, it, it's them. The same ones who left Earth a thousand years ago. You didn't know? With a keen eye, you would have recognized Dr. X from the opening scene talking about the Far Zenith project. I'm telling you, the old ones put blades on their feet and... Danced on ice. That doesn't sound safe. Every time you come back to this room, you hear them discussing something from the old world. And it's always so intriguing hearing your thoughts on... Well, us. Like I mentioned with the clothes earlier. It's neat to watch Gorilla poke fun at us. Aloy. I see we have a new guest. Let's get used to it. We're assembling the Avengers. Or, I, I guess, the pre-Avengers in this case. The old ones didn't choose their fight, but still, they stood firm. They didn't falter. And neither will we. Wise words that with the state of things going on in the world right now, really hit hard. The savior of Meridian. Oh god, I can't handle all these buttery voices in one game. So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? And taking what I need to save everyone. Dang, by the end of the game, Aloy is not willing to trade any lives to save everyone, and that's beautiful. It makes Tate's line about not loving anyone on the planet hit harder. Elizabeth was amazing, no doubt, but not without fault, and Aloy's desire to live up to her legacy once again is tainting her potential. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the cool route. It didn't take long for her car to win me over. This isn't about him, but his people. How many times am I going to win the design of this game? From the environments, to the costuming, to the cultures, down to the hair, it's all so stellar. I mean, we already know Aloy's got some bonkers good hair that I won in the Zero Dawn video, but Deco, what kind of product she got for making that work? Ascend it slopes until your legs burn and the chill air catches in your chest. Very often we are given descriptions of where to go in the dialogue, and this is for those that use explore mode for their waypoints. I love having the option between the two, as you can really just get lost in this world and truly receive that sense of discovery that so many open worlds often steal away from us through waypoints. Looking at you, Rockstar. This open world music right here is the most calming, beautiful piece I've ever heard traversing an open world. When paired with the visuals, it's entrancing. You can see in the footage that when I crested this hill, I, I stopped to slow down and just be for a moment. And I don't normally do that in games. I'm always about efficiency and on to the next thing. And Gorilla got me to stop and smell the roses. I think now is a good time to mention the DualSense controller. It truly is a next gen controller and it's not a gimmick like many seem to think. The many different tensions on the trigger are so finely tuned that they never got in the way of my enjoyment or ever tired me out, which is very possible with these controllers. Coupling this with the haptics, it honestly immerses you so much more than you could ever realize without trying it yourself. It's never so brazen and strong that it's annoying, and it's subtle enough to enhance the experience that I'd say you're missing out if you don't use these. And coming from a PC shield, the DualSense actually makes me want to use the controller over keyboard and mouse, which I never thought I'd say in this life. 
And more interestingly, the triggers were under control of the game designers and the haptics, the audio team. And I wouldn't have thought twice about it, but of course the audio team would be in charge of the haptics. They are dealing with vibrations all the time. And thank the sun that Gorilla improved the spear combat from Zero Dawn. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and there is still a lot to be desired. But they made up a lot of ground with Forbidden West, giving it an entire skill tree with combos and abilities that synergize with your bow. You actually got a good reason to use the spear now. When they shunned me, or when they stopped and stared. I think Bo Burnham put it best when he said, Haters gonna hate, lovers gonna love. You need to reject both sides of the spectrum to leave a healthy middle. And what do you know of the battles that the bulwark has withstood? I know it wasn't meant to be used as a coward's shield. Okay, Catalo, I see you. One of my favorite additions are the grappling hook and glider. These two together add so much to the traversal in combat. Nothing like grapple jumping off a pole, gliding over an enemy, and shoving your spear through him. Never got old. I defy him like that arrogant shit up there? That was an unkind comparison. Jax, is that you? So, anyone else grow up watching Lord of the Rings? Like, it was the first movie I remember seeing when I was like four or five, and I honestly thought elephants were as big as Moomagill. Imagine my disappointment finding out they weren't. Um. Uh, Wait, wait, what does this have to do with Horizon? Uh, Tremor Tusk's design is dope and reminds me of Haradrim. Stuff like this is where the dual sense really shines. The controller really conveys the power of this weapon so much more than a slow-moving sensitivity on the right stick could ever do. If I'm above... Sometimes fire, fire isn't the worst thing? <laughs> no, this is just an arms race. Nothing we've never seen before. Every time Aloy does this, it's a... Oh, wait, that's not her. Again, the dual sense immerses us. We see and hear nothing but the controller is vibrating with the stomping of hooves. That's right, over here, you big worm! I guess there are no natural snakes in the new world. <laughs> Dang, Aloy Strong. I know she's using the column for support, but still. I was wondering where they learned the salute, as it's an old world thing. And that also reminds me, Aloy is really the only person to use old world squares as well. Obviously, because of all of her time looking at data points and stuff. A friend of yours should be interesting. <laughs> That's so funny. Even Catalo's picked up on her self-isolationism. Hi! <laughs> Happy birthday, Isaac! Oh, I'm beta loving this too. Of course she does. She grew up very similar to Aloy, and seeing this love is just so alien, but so comforting to them. While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, beta? I love that Varl was able to get through to her. I would have loved to see some more Big Brother vibes from him, but Varl being the first to connect with both the Elizabeth clones is still great. You don't know why she did those things? I don't, okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm just soft or I'm relating way too hard to Peta, but her immediately jumping to blaming herself breaks my freaking heart. And we're getting more parallels to Aloy, like with Ross leaving her behind. With a hose to a... Compressed, compressed air, air capsule. capsule, hammer and tongs. What is this? What is happening here? What is happening is my favorite trope of mine in stories. She's a stranger. You got a name? Aloy. Moreland. Not a stranger anymore. Perfect. I love that. It reminds me of a line from a poem by Sam Koichin that I love. I played two player conversations with total strangers for no reason than to make them less strange. It's such a moving poem that has original music he reads it to, and I'll link it below because it's really, really good, and I implore you go listen to it. Partner? Partner? This is the first game in a while to just make me genuinely smile like a goober at the interactions on screen. Yo, you can't tell me you weren't constantly thinking of the Star Wars rebreathers when you saw this. Underwater combat would have been so cool, but I get why they didn't do it. Most people would have hated it, even if it was done well, like Monster Hunter Try. Also, this is an off-brand Logiacris, and I'm here for it. What a more creative way of doing Las Vegas. Instead of just having all the ruins above ground, like we expect, they sank most of the city and put it among these beautiful holograms underwater. We get to see our above ground ruined city in Fisco. And we got a lot of the neat landmarks. The Globe, the Eiffel Tower, and what I think to be the Hotel Bellagio next to the Hotel Tower, I think. And not every landmark is physically left, so we've got these holograms, like for the Stratosphere Tower. The private bunker he retreated to when the world ended, and nobody knows where that is, not even the Zeniths. So the only connection between Thebes and Ted that relates back to what we know is that it was the birthplace of Hercules. And with how self-centered and hubristic Ted was, I bet he named his place that as he viewed himself as a hero, such as Herc, once he emerged from the tomb. <laughs> Do 
hear that? That gorgeous instrumental in the Floods melody? How jaw-dropping is this view? Nope. Nah. From the moment I saw this man's design, I hated and did not trust him. Good on you, Gorilla. Man, the T-Rex was such a boss. Even with all the other great new machine design, nothing commands respect like the classic. And the weirdo Ted lovers got his blue on for his lover. Oh, why are you dressed like Ted Pharaoh? Took the words right out of my mouth. You will wear the proper attire to mark this moment. Man, Sio's head is so far up his ass he thinks he could do Jedi mind tricks. All game, Aloy has been wanting to live up to Elizabeth's legacy. And it's really telling that she does not feel comfortable wearing it. On one hand, it's the part of her not feeling worthy of the rain make. And on the other hand, it's kind of disrespectful to Sobek too in her mind. Kind of like, How dare you stand where he stood? Look at this place, the grandeur. And I love the difference between Sobek's resting place and Ted's. We know how starkly different they are, but it's something else to see it firsthand. I guess it's just us then. Alva didn't seem like the one that could handle herself. Was expecting the damsel smart girl that can't fight, but no, she kicks ass. Yes, corruptors. I love fighting these bad boys in Zero Dawn. I think you're right. You do have a lot in common with Ted Farrow. Backhanded sly compliment dig. That went right over this fool's head. If anything, my cells are replenishing faster than normal. So he just got cancer. Some things never change. I love that this is all we see of Ted. They never actually show what he looks like. Just this red hologram. Whatever we can imagine happened to him is way more horrifying than Gorilla could ever think of. Coupled with the fact that showing his situation would place too much importance on him when he's just this puny, weak man. They're gonna need me. My advice. My guidance. And that's the real reason that Ted purged Apollo. For one, to hide his mistakes from the future, but so he can take complete control and lead them in his own image, just like the Zenith's desire. <laughs> No! Muppets and some symbolic irony. I guess you could say he gave his life to help us attain the secrets of Thebes. The CEO was an entitled egotist who twisted our beliefs into a sickening, self-serving fantasy. Woo! A good way to subvert our expectations. Beta, look, it's not a piece of Elizabeth. Is it enough just to say that her saying this almost made me cry again watching this back. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. you. Love something, sometimes you gotta let it go. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. God, I'm so sad. Just to think that someone has gone their whole life without ever experiencing love. And to remember that this isn't just a fantasy for this character, but all over the world there are people in the same shoes as Beta. I wish I could do something to offer those people some way of feeling that, at least for a moment, but the closest I can get to making these videos. So I hope these videos help some of you out there in, in any way. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? God, what an ask. Yeah, sing it, baby. F anyone that's grown so cynical and can't get past their own selves to just enjoy a story, even if it's not told perfectly or as well as they would have wanted. Seeing Aloy with her crew behind her and this music is what it's all about, especially coming off the heels of her and Beta's conversation. As a wise man once said, Oh yeah, it's all coming together. And that shot, Varl, Aloy, and Beta. Varl being the one to reach out to both and give Aloy the strength to teach Beta the lessons she's learned about taking one's hand in the flood. <laughs> Aloy looking over at her sister to follow along. And she sends a sunwing over to Aloy, the same one she was in awe at on the way to the cauldron. It's kind of a uh, sweet thank you. Or maybe an I love you, I don't know. God damn it, we can't have anything nice. Costume design's nice. Placing Tilda in the white as she's the only good one among them. Damn, they just really had to kill off Varl, didn't they? The Sobeks just aren't allowed to have the one person that guided them alive, are they? But yeah, Varl served his purpose in the story, and now that he's gone, it's up to them to live up to what he taught them. <laughs> Finally. Tilda, get Gaia and Hephaestus ready for transport. Could you have done it? I, I know I couldn't. Parallels. Uh, Tilda brought Aloy to the same place she did Beta. My little trick. It was an overload of the senses. So she dosed him is what I'm hearing. 
Aloy eats an apple, which means she's the bad guy. No, this isn't Cinema Sense. One that only I know about. While well, silence and my friends. Playing to your audience. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. I love this. This is Aloy's big turning point where she rejects following Elizabeth's legacy and chooses to rise above her station and find another way. A way that spares as many lives as possible, where enduring victory did not. What did you tell her? That is between me and my sister. <laughs> yes, <laughs> she said it. I'm gonna cry. Everyone mourns in their own way. If I was praying, Cotalo's angry, and Aaron's getting drunk. And Alva, no, well, she didn't really know him, and I don't know even know what she's doing. Still the sea rises and so it's not as pretty as the first time we heard it, but our girl is grieving. It still sounds great. I'm only bringing this up to defend Eowyn in the Two Towers as she sang the lament for Theodred. And people talk a lot of shit on that. And I think it sounded amazing. And y'all just mean, yes, they did it. I wanted this so badly in the first game. And if you're wondering why we can't ride the Tremor Tusks or Thunder Jaws, Gorilla said that to make that work, they had to pull the camera back immensely to the point that it didn't feel like Aloy controlling a machine, but just being the machine. And they weren't fond of this disconnect, so they scrapped it. Let's just throw them in for the horse design. Let's settle this. You and me. Easy to say when you're atop a machine. Some role reversal. When they first met, Regala was atop a machine and Aloy below her. Yo, <laughs> I've missed you, bud. Well, Silence, looks like you finally found a door you could open without me. I've eliminated the imperfections and greatly improved its design and output. How can we be sure? Care for a demonstration. Silence is a badass. If only we had an army to fight them. I've got that under control. You'll know when you need to. I'm loving all this keeping silence in the dark business between Aloy and Tilda. Once again, this open world music brings me peace. And it came at the perfect time that I wasn't expecting. This calm fly before the storm wasn't some scripted bit by Gorilla, and that made it so much more meaningful to me. As long as you hold up your end, we will. We. I don't really got any words except, heck yeah. I can't but wish that she did the little slide under move that Ross taught her to really solidify and hit home the point of the scene. But it still works. She's able to get through because of the people around her. This is just a me win. For some reason, right at the end of both games, I mistakenly ran out of Ridgewood and had to scrape by the final fights. And the serendipity of it just made me feel more connected to these two games. Now we're having fun, right? Just like Aloy did in the first game, calling back the enemy's line as they kill the one who murdered that which they loved. Look. Yoris, you're the man with this score. <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> I'm so stupid. Imagine being trapped alone for decades with only the twisted echoes of megalomaniacs for company. It hates us for abandoning it to that prison. And now that it's free, it will do anything to destroy us. So Nemesis, by definition, is a fitting name as it and the Zeniths views each other as such, but also works with the Greek naming scheme. The goddess Nemesis in mythology is the god who enacts retribution upon those who succumb to hubris. Which is why we must flee to a random planet circling a random star somewhere it can never find us. With Gaia, so you can build yourself a new world. I don't hate her. Though she lied, her intentions aren't malicious. I may have liked this push and pull to be the main focus of the game instead of just a stereotypical evil, but you can't have everything. And Tilda being an anti-hero of sorts that we're forced to fight against is still great. Now she stands before me again. Not some inferior copy, but her best possible self. She was trying to continue to manipulate Aloy. Boy, did it backfire. Insulting her sister and then trying to box Aloy back into that Elizabeth mold, which she has already shed? There was no other choice than to fight after that comment. I mean, yeah, she was going to steal her away and didn't give her a choice, but either way. Come now, Aloy. You're the last person to act sensibly in the face of impossible odds. <laughs> Silence is comedy gold. You'd be saving a seed for a new world. Just as Elizabeth did. 
It's the choice she made. The sacrifice of all that is for the hope of what might be. If she were here in your place. And like I mentioned, Aloy's arc wasn't just about learning to accept help, but to embody everything Elizabeth was and be better. And what makes me real emotional is that through this choice of her staying to fight for this world, she's fulfilling Sobek's hope for a child. To be willful, unstoppable, and have enough compassion to heal the world just a little bit. That compassion is something that Elizabeth buried so deep inside herself. Remember the story she told about not caring for the birds that she burnt as a child? A parent very often hopes that their child will be better than them, and Aloy fully realizes this hope. Goodbye, Silence. And though Aloy letting Silence go is basically dooming the Earth in my mind, as it's going to take both of them to fight Nemesis, it doesn't nullify Elizabeth's hope. Heal the world. Just a little bit. Her staying with the people she loves is that little bit. Holding on to them until the bitter end. For a time. You people are going to need all of the help you can get. And it makes me so happy that it's Silence seeing that love which Aloy shares with these people that convinces him this world is worth saving. Life is only meaningful because of the people and purpose we give it. Very different than the one you fought. Oh, mementos of her two parents. And she's finally able to remove the weight of the world off her shoulders. This final monologue is not as subtle as the first games, but I don't mind it. I've heard people complaining that this story is generic and speaks too much to the themes about global warming, our inability to come together, corporate greed, and the hopelessness in the face of adversity. But what's the harm in it? You look at enough stories over a long enough period of time, you'll see that they all follow the same themes and patterns. The things people wrote about and struggled with thousands of years ago are still the same things we're going through today. And it's our job as humans to write these stories, share our experiences and our feelings on what's going on through whatever lens we might find ourselves peering through at the moment. And it's a message that we've all got to remember. With the politics of the world bombarding us every day, the paralyzing access to all knowledge at our fingertips, the, the slow isolation technology has moved some of us towards, it, it can feel hopeless, but it's not. It's up to each one of us to decide what we're going to do in the face of that adversity. President Zelensky has shown us this in recent times. Are we going to hide and hope that things blow over and start fresh, if we even can after everything is said and done? Or are we going to go kicking, screaming and bleeding until there's not a drop of life left of us to give? I think what I want to leave you guys with is a little bit of the poem from Dylan Thomas. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light.